What's the creepiest thing you've seen that you weren't supposed to see? A few years ago, I still lived in my parents' house. It was about 11 p.m., and our dog started barking viciously. The dog is only able to move around in the backyard, and normally he would bark at cats in the front yard, but something about his bark was different. So I walked to the window to see what was going on. I looked out and saw a man looking through the same window. We both froze, and after a few seconds, he ran off. A few weeks later, when we came home after work, all our electronics and expensive stuff was gone. On my way home, I was looking at a busy street. From the subway platform I was on, and I saw this guy that everyone knew as a scammer in the neighborhood. He'd throw himself in front of cars for money. But that day, he threw himself in front of a really nice car, and it struck him real hard. He flew into the four-way intersection, clearly shocked by the pain, and his head got crushed under a truck passing by that didn't slow down in time. It looked like a watermelon exploding. It's crazy seeing a full unhuman who has existed for decades just stop existing in a few seconds. Many years ago, when the ninja motorcycles were really getting popular, the guy I was dating wanted one really bad. It was all he would talk about for weeks. His dad was a cop and knew his son was too stupid to ever safely operate a bike like that and wanted to turn him off of his obsession with the bike, so he got a hold of some footage of a crash on a ninja. It was a young man and a woman, both were wearing shorts, t-shirts, flip-flops, no helmets. They must have hit the wall at 100 mph. The camera did a close-up of the ninja logo on the piece of the motorcycle lying in the street, then surveyed the scene. The guy's face had hit the wall and just smeared along with it for about a foot. It looked like someone had taken silly putty with a face on it and stretched it out. Unreal. The girl's whole body was just broken and her head was nowhere. Arms and legs were dangling and pointing the wrong directions a lot less blood than I expected. As the cleanup crew was putting her body in the body bed, tucking broken and flailing limbs into it, one of them said to the other, guess physical therapy is out of the question. My uncle was babysitting me when I was about nine, and so I went to work with him for the day. He was a landlord for some buildings in a city at the time and got complaints then. An elderly woman hadn't been seen in a few days by the neighbors. She was on the ground floor, and I think the door may have been locked from the inside, with a chain or something, but he had me climb in through the window to open the front door for him. My naturally curious self crawled through the window, and instead of going straight, for the front door, I followed an awful smell towards the bedroom and found this lady's face upon the ground, dead. The place was a mess, so I didn't immediately associate the bad smell with death, but I bolted to the front door and watched them take her away in the ambulance. I don't know any legal answers here, and I never really talked about it. Weird day not me, but my wife. Our first apartment was on the ground level, with our windows looking out on a brick paved courtyard. She was at home in the living room, taking care of two toddlers, home daycare, when there was a loud sound from out in the courtyard, and she felt a reverberation on our floor. She said it sounded like someone had dropped a heavy box from a height. She looked out the living room window to see what junk got tossed out a window or whatever. She couldn't really see anything, so she stepped out into the lobby and opened the door, leading to the courtyard. That's when she saw the body of the man who had just jumped off the roof. I'm a sales rep and was looking for a meeting room in a rural hospital's pathology department and got lost. I started opening doors to find someone who could help me. When I opened one door, there was a primate of some sort, not human that was suspended by its wrists that had all of its skin flayed off. Presumably, it was a primate cadaver being used for anatomy lessons, but it scared the shit out of me. The skin was removed from the skull, but the eyeballs remained, so it appeared to be staring at me as I entered the room. Pathology departments in small town hospitals are creepy as hell. When I was 15, a buddy and I were hiking along the Merced River to our fishing spot one. We were stopped on the path by three guys with ball caps and bananas covering their faces and holding shotguns. They told us to turn around and go back, which we did without question. It was very strange since we'd been down there dozens of times and had never seen them before or after this. Found out a few months after that there was a campers really happening on the property of a guy who lived down there and they were guards. One morning, I was woken up by someone using an angle grinder. I know it was my younger brother, he usually used that to cut stuff. 
A couple of minutes later, I heard a noise of liquid splashing, only you hear in horror movies. I wasn't sure if it was a dream or not because I was half asleep. Seconds later, my brother walked into my room holding his right hand with his other hand, to not fall off his body, looked at me, and told me to not let him die. I was in shock. I picked something, like a towel or I don't know what it was, and quickly put that around his arm and called in 11. But I was so shocked I couldn't even talk for, like a minute, I put myself together and told the operator what happened and waited for the ambulance. I don't know how long it took them to arrive, but all that time I sat there with my brother trying to keep him awake. I watched how slowly the light in his eyes faded. He passed out a few times. When the ambulance came, I went out of the house to get some air while they did their stuff. The first thing I saw was the angle grinder with the power cable cut off and a line of blood two meters long. There was no time for an ambulance to get into the hospital fast enough, so they called a helicopter. My brother survived. He can move that arm and even carry stuff with it, but lost most of its dexterity, which sucks because he is right-handed. This happened three years ago. While working in a level 1 trauma center, calibrating medical x-ray equipment, I was in the emergency room, hearing noises, voices, normal stuff. Anyway, I heard this kid crying, screaming at the top of his lungs, sound like pretty powerful lungs. I was guessing high school age. Everyone was moving fast as they normally do however, they had looked on their faces of deep concern. When one of the techs I knew well had a moment, I asked, guessing a kid fell out of his treehouse. The tech shook his head and claimed, that's no kid in there. That's a full grown man who was riding his motorcycle and came in some assembly required. I couldn't resist. A 200 was man over 6 feet tall in black Harley Davidson leather. He lost his arm above the elbow and one of his legs was twisted around completely backward. A visual I will never get out of my head. With that much blood, you can physically smell the iron in the air. That's what I get for looking. I was driving to a Jimmy Buffett concert in Pennsylvania back in 2007 with my brother and two friends. We were just driving along and saw a four-door sedan in the right-hand lane about half a like in front of us, swerving. I figured maybe they were going to the concert and pregame a little too much. Anyway, my brother decides to pull up on them and see what we can see. As we are approaching, we see handfuls of papers being thrown out the passenger window. Confused, we speed up and are just about to pass them on the left. We see a couple in their 50s in the car. The husband, who is driving, is just throwing haymakers at his wife right to her face in the passenger seat as he's driving. Time feels like it stood still for a minute. We are driving alongside with me in the passenger seat, window rolled down, flailing my arms around and yelling, trying to get the guy's attention. Remind you we are going 55s. Another car comes up behind us and we actually manage to block the dude in and slow him down. Meanwhile, my friend in the back seat is on the phone with 911 trying to get a cop out. There. Long story short, we end up slowing the car down to a slow crawl and cops show up within what seemed like a minute. Cops took our statements and arrested the dude. It was a pretty quiet ride the rest of the way to the concert. A drunk idiot got hit by a car right in front of me in the middle of the night in the middle of freaking nowhere. His condition was unstable. The trauma helicopter with trauma team of was needed. I was holding a sheet with another person so onlookers wouldn't see what was happening. And well, it was pretty at all. Ever heard ribs crack due to CPR? And his lung collapsed? Or it was filling with blood? Not sure. But, the trauma doctor opened up his chest right in front of me. I do not have any medical background, and well, I've seen things that night that I wasn't supposed to. But it did give me more appreciation seeing those professionals in action basically performing surgery right in front of me. I was rather impressed by how methodical they were and their cool-headedness. When I was little me and my family lived over 20 kilometers from a city in the woods. We had a nanny stay with us when our parents were away. Once when only me, my sister, we were around 8 years old, and nanny were home while, playing outside, we saw a bunch of people emerge from the forest nearby and walk slowly, like zombies towards our house. They tried climbing the fence, but they were too out of it to accomplish such a task. The nanny called our mom, and she drove home from the city and took us all to our grandparents. We later found out that there was some drug-infused party going on not too far from our home. And two people died from overdosing, one from stab wounds there. To this day, I feel super portfolio that they were too tired or drugged out to get past. Our fence the day, and the police were able to apprehend the ones that stayed around long enough. A few years ago, my wife and I were searching for our first home. 
I was in the basement of one of the places that we were looking in and somehow noticed a light switch that seemed out of place. I was flicking the switch as my wife and agent came down the stairs. My agent noticed a bit of light coming from underneath the drywall framing the stairs. With a little further inspection, I found a very tiny passage between the foundation wall and the backside of the stairs. Said passage opened up into an undisclosed renovation that was a sub-basement room that was completely rubberized with an industrial hose and shower head. The walls, ceilings, and flooring were all rubber. It was 100% a secret murder room. My agent called the cops, and 48 days later, the listing was removed, and the home had police tape around it. I worked at a hospital when I was younger food service, delivering food trays to the patients. I walked into one of the psych rooms unknowingly. There was a crazy lady sitting in a chair holding a bedpan full of feces. And let me tell you when I say crazy, this woman had a look in her eye that I haven't ever seen and don't ever want to see again. She said, if you don't get out of my dwelling, I'm gonna throw shit on you little boy. I've never been so freaked out in my life. Needless to say, I dropped the damn tray and ran out. I was working in an office at the bottom of an apartment building. I was out having a smoke between phone calls and I heard a noise from above and I looked up to see a middle-aged woman coming straight down. I put my back against the wall and just watched the impact as it made a sound I'll never forget. I walked up to her to see if there was anything I could do, but I knew right away by her color and pool of blood forming beneath her I couldn't, so I ran in and called in at 11. Elise arrived and I filled a report, closed up the office and went home. The very next morning, on my way to my other job, I saw a person walking on the side of the highway. Maybe 10 minutes later, I heard on the radio a pedestrian was struck on the same highway I was just on. So yeah, that was pretty weird. My family is a big hunting family. We hunt mainly wild boar but pretty much any pest. Control that needs to be taken care of on our properties is done without batting an island. Driving to my uncle's farm pretty late at night, we turn a corner and see a few men with rifles on their backs just off to the side of the road, all standing around what looks like some kind of skin pig or kangaroo. My dad starts yelling at us, don't look, don't look, but being the little shit that I am, of course, I stared out my window. I wasn't, and still am not scared of blood, and I had seen plenty of dying and dead animals before, so I was confused as to why my dad was so shaken. As we pass, the men all turn and look at us, and the animal also turns to look at us, but it wasn't an animal. It was a man stripped and beaten to an inch of his life, curled up on the ground. I remember looking at my dad from the back seat. He was gripping the wheel so tightly his elbows were locked, and he was staring straight ahead. Dad called the cops once we got to the farm, but they said they didn't find anything. I don't know if my dad knows I saw it too, but we've never driven that road in the dark again. Okay, I don't talk about this, ever, but I'm just going to say mine. My neighbor's suicide. I was only like nine, and it was, I've been told deaf by shotgun to the face. I say, I've been told because my mind has blocked most of it out. I can remember walking up the steps and opening the door and then nothing. The closest thing I can remember after that was my mom holding me and rocking back and forth. I can also remember the smell. Not sure if it's the smell I smelled that day, but sometimes when the memory of walking up those steps is brought to mind, I get a faint smell in my nose. It's almost like the smell of cut meat and blood and pine wood. I was put into therapy for a while after it, but I can't remember much of that besides playing games. In my late teens, my therapist tried to get me to remember what I blocked out. It didn't work, and I decided that I couldn't remember for the simple fact that I wasn't supposed to see that, which is why I never speak of it. Even my friends I grew up with don't know about it. Thanks for listening. The subscribe button and activate the notification bell for more things you don't want to know. Let us know in the comments what you think about these stories.